In this video, we'll be focusing on how to develop black and white film with Cinestills DF96. What we'll need is a table, which is the table in front of me right here. Two rolls of film. One is HP5, the other one is Trix 400. A pair of scissors. A can opener, specifically for film, but you don't really need this one. A Patterson tank which is super important. And it also has a ton of things in it. So first thing is the lid. Then we have our blackout top. It doesn't allow anything to get in, in terms of light. Super important. The next super important step is going to be the reels that your film goes on to. And this, I guess you can call it a pole. Final piece is going to be our development bag looks like a t-shirt with no neck but hey let's dance so we're gonna take our reels and essentially what we have to do is in the dark we have to take our film and slide it onto the reel why I say in the dark is because this is gonna happen inside the darkroom bag now pay attention to how much difficulty I have doing this while looking at the actual reel then multiply it by 100 because that's what it's like when you do it in the bag. But you do it all the way until you get all the film out of the actual roll. Then you go ahead and you put it onto the spool. You put the spool back into the canister. Then you take the blackout top, put it on top, lock it. You'll hear a good click. If it's not locked, it's not blackout. So when you put it on, you have to give it a firm twist and your hair go click then you know your stuff won't fall out and the light doesn't come in put your top on and then you're ready to agitate oh yeah agitation agitate agitate mm -mm -mm. all right now for real i'm gonna actually do this in a darkroom bag I'm gonna speed this up so you guys don't have to go through the process of it all and watch me bore you. So we take everything, we throw it into our bag and then we're ready to rock and roll. I usually start with the spools first, then the pieces of the Patterson tank. I put my film inside of the Patterson tank so I don't have to worry about it falling out the sleeves before I put my arms into the sleeves. Last piece is the film in the Patterson tank. When you zip it up, the first layer of protection is there. Then the second is this Velcro layer. Once you get that done and put your arms into the bag, your bag is absolutely blacked out. I actually like to make sure that I take off all of my jewelry as well and roll up my sleeves before doing this because I don't want to give the light any opportunity to creep in. That would be a big, big, big headache and it will probably ruin all of our film. But what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to time how fast I get this done starting now. And there we have it. Film off of the rolls and onto the spools that's an empty container and everything is now in a Patterson tank so I empty out my bag before I get ready to go Light proof. You can see I even put it next to a light. <laughs> this is what we'll be using our Cinestell DF96 mono bath solution. So everything we need is all in this one bottle. All we need is the chemicals inside this bottle, 
our Patterson tank and then I like to add on my own extra little edge at the end which is the Kodak Photoflow 200 which just pretty much makes sure that there's no streaks on my film it makes life a whole lot easier oh last piece is gonna be a thermometer even though this is a one-step process um, I use the thermometer because at 80 degrees you're supposed to be able to develop the film at three minutes with constant agitation so why prolong the process if we do not need to so my developer was at 77 so I need to give it a hot water bath and that's gonna allow me to speed things up for my development while we're giving it a hot water bath what we're gonna do is we're also gonna pour 80 degree temperature water into our Patterson tank to make sure that our film is the same temperature as our developer will be so it won't go into shock at all depending on what film you use it's actually going to result in either clear water or a weird toned color maybe purple or green it just depends on the kind of film that you're using and boom there you have it the developer is at 80 degrees so we're going to empty out this bucket here or this big bowl that i use we're going to get our development on so first step is going to be to pour out our rinse and this time it didn't yield any color that's fine that doesn't mean that anything is wrong just this film did not give you any color in the water so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to pour the developer in once the developer is in i i their measurements on the Patterson tank, but I don't typically follow them. I just go until I see it start to pool up at the top a little bit. Um, the film community is probably going to tear me apart for that, but that's okay because it's my film and it still comes out pretty damn good. But once it's there, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start a timer on the phone and we're going to put our lid on it and begin our agitation cycles. And so the way I like to agitate is I give it a half spin or as far as my wrist would allow my hand to spin um, while also tilting it to the other side. So when you use both hands spinning it, you pretty much will get a complete circle every other hand, if that makes any sense. If it doesn't, just look at what I'm doing here. This is how I get it done. And we do this for three minutes. Every so often I'll go ahead and I'll burp the actual Patterson tank to make sure that there isn't any pressure filling up inside the canister and I'll tap it to make sure that the bubbles from the developer when they were pulled in are not trapped on the film making for an uneven development. Um, once done with our three minutes I go ahead and I take my funnel rinse it out to make sure there's no previous chemicals left on it even though I rinse them at the end of every use and I go ahead and pour our chemicals back into the actual packaging that's one of the best parts about this right because it's an all-in-one but it's also reusable so it's good for the planet right you don't have to worry about putting any pollutants into your actual sink or anything of that nature but make sure that you get all of the developer out of there what you're going to do is start your rinse at this point it's safe for you to take off your gloves so you can take off your gloves and begin your rinse. You should be re rinsing your film for about three to four minutes. At least that's what the bottle says, but I do my own thing. So I rinse it a couple times and let it fill up to full capacity and overflow, pour it out. Then I take apart my Patterson sink because at this point your film is developed. Go right ahead let some water hit the actual reel and the film swish it around you know make sure that you're getting all the developer and all the chemical off of your film then you pour it out at this point you can look at your film without damaging it so after a couple of cycles of rinsing it out what i like to do is i like to take the reel out and just make sure that i'm not playing around with blink film but there it is there go our images we can see it so it does not say that you should run it underwater but i do that as well so i'm running it underwater to make sure that there are no more chemicals on here and then from here we go with our photo flow so i fill the canister back up with water with the film reels in it 
and you put a couple drops not much photo flow because photo flow is super concentrated um this one bottle should last me at least a year but then i take my agitation stick that comes with the actual patterson tank and i switch the film reels around in there to make sure that everything gets coated and boom now we should be streak free once you get a good soapy leather you can go ahead and pour out your coat of flow into the sink um you do not have to rinse this off it will the suds will actually weigh themselves down off of the film where you hang them up so now we can go ahead and check and unroll our film off of this um reel and boom we have images the entire film stripped through so no mishaps with the exception of the actual leader but boom there are images um they don't really look like much right now but give it some time and now we're in my bathroom right uh don't pay any mind to these 1920 curtain rods but this is how i actually hang up my film when i'm at home i have some um heavy duty paper clips i clip the leader hang them to the curtain and at the very end we have another clip okay so as you can tell we've made a change of scenery right um we went from my small new york city apartment in a super small kitchen to the studio and there's a reason for that right if i have a full studio why would i continue to put you guys and myself through the trouble of experiencing videos captured in a small box when we have a slightly larger box with the intent of creating it right so moving forward, all of my videos will be taking place mostly in the studio, if not on location. So on to the second part of this video. So now um, we have film. This is not the same exact film that I developed because quite some time has passed since that development to now. But to go along with the actual title of the video, I am gonna follow through with my word and I'm going to show you guys the next couple steps, right? So we went from me making the photo, which you guys didn't see, to me taking the film and putting it into the darkroom bag, then into the Patterson tank. From the Patterson tank, it was developed. Out of the development, you saw it hung up in my bathroom. And now we're here at the step of archiving and scanning. So I took the liberty of screen recording the scanning process of some of those black and white images that we originally developed. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is show you the process that I take with all of my film in terms of taking it from a roll of film, right? To getting it here. In archival sleeves and ready to go. So there are a couple things that you need, right? And we're gonna go down the list. You're gonna need an iPad or a light table. I use my iPad as a light table, save yourself the money and jump in on this hack i'll show i'll share with you guys you're gonna need some cotton lint-free gloves a good pair of scissors a loop right and uh you can get this carson 10x loop for less than 10 bucks from adorama.com and then print file archival sheets um this was the first time i bought archival sheets for 35 millimeter and these have what seven rows is it seven rows? Seven rows of five, which leave you with 35 images. But that's a mess up on my behalf because you know the average roll of film has 36. So what do I do when I get a couple extra? I'll share that with you guys as well. But let's go into the process. Oh, I almost forgot one of the most important parts. Your rocket blower and a good scanner. Here I have my Epson V600 and this is everything we'll need for the next couple steps in this video. So. Let's get to it. Here's, here's what we do. We get our gloves, slide them on. And yes, before you guys chew me up in the comments, I do know that my gloves look a little young, a little small. And that is because um, I did not realize my hands were large, were larger than a, uh, than a large. These are extra, extra large hands for a small person. They didn't, really under, they didn't really think that would be the case, but nevertheless, here we are. Um, so here we are, archival sleeve. Boom, move all the rest of the stuff out of the way. And what we'll do is, instead of going from the back to the front, I'd like to go from the front to the back. So I'm gonna go back up and I'm gonna give my film a loose roll. All right. 
look for the first shot. And the first shot on my Nikon for my Nikon F3 is usually a half a shot. And it's not, it's often not really good. So I just get rid of that one. Boom. And leaves me with this. I keep these because I'm in the process of a workshop or developing a workshop that this is gonna come in handy for. But now moving forward, we have the strips for film. So what you do is, or what I do is, I count out five, right? One, two, three, four, five. And yes, I count out loud or at least moving my lips. Then you go right ahead and you cut at the line. But you take, I always recommend for people to take their time when they're cutting at the line because it's not a very thick line and it was very easy for you to um, encroach on another, another, um, shit, why am I drawing a blank on the word? On another frame or another photo. So it's very important that you take your time. I also like to um, look at my film after I cut it and make sure that I'm putting it into the archival sleeve right side up um, and in order, right? Some people aren't that um, meticulous, but I am. I would like to know that when I pull out every single sheet of film that I can place it into the scanner tray the same exact way and know that they'll be lined up. Call me crazy. But here we are. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Take your time. Nice and slow. Boom. There you have it. And that's pretty much the process of archiving this film. So um, I'm going to do this and you guys are gonna watch. But I sped up because I don't want to bore you guys to death. And I would like for you guys to come back and visit me again and not think that I'm torturing you guys on YouTube. So um, we'll speed up now. Okay, now we're down to our last little bit of film. And here, you can tell that I rushed the film because there's way more shots left that didn't get exposed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut out the length of about five. And cut it. The only reason I'm cutting out the length of about five is so that I do not run, end up with a short piece of film inside my um, archival sleeve, making it super difficult for me to pull it out. All right, but now it's on to the next step. So what's the next step, you say? Next step involves our trusty, dusty iPad, right? Okay, so here on my iPad, um, I have an app. And the name of the app is called Lightbox Trace, right? Lightbox Trace pretty much gives me, turns my iPad screen into a lightbox. So what I'm gonna do is take my film, lay it down on top, take my loop, right? I can't do it that way because it's gonna muffle the mic, but I'm gonna look over the images. And this will let me know, one, what I'm looking at, but two, if these photos are any good and worth um, scanning. So once I look over these images and decide which ones are worth scanning, I can go ahead and take them out. Here's my Epson V600. Here's the printer tray or the scanner tray. Open them up and put them on a the scanner tray. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, we have to go ahead and label our sleeve. So what we're gonna do is, I usually like to start with the type of film. So this was XR100. Um, this was in Georgia. This was in Edenton actually. So. And this was on, uh, sorry, sorry, we shot with Nikon F3. And this was on July 8th. Boom. So now that everything is properly noted, we go ahead and I'm going about the process of placing our film negatives into our tray. So from here, you go ahead and you remove this top part of the tray. Um, I am not going to use my gloves. You guys can probably give me a hard time on um, YouTube about that, but I'm not. Um, boom, take it. You wanna take the shiny side and place it face down, right? 
So we'll take the shiny side, place it face down. So we'll take the second piece of film, shiny side face down, boom. And then we're gonna take our top, the top part of our tray. We're going to place it back on top, right? Right into the top grooves. And we're gonna lock the outside. So what I do is I typically like to lock the outside of the film tray, not the inside here. And then once the outside is locked, I go ahead and I align the film properly to make sure that you don't see too many of the brackets for the camera. And to make sure the two pieces of film are like almost at the same point. Then I go ahead and I lock it. Boom. There, you should be able to look up at light and see that you have equal borders, right? But also at the same time, see that you're not seeing any of the little holes that the 35 millimeter camera catches. Go ahead and line it up with its respective place on the scanner, close it, and then we jump right into our Mac. Here we are looking at my desktop. On my desktop, you can see that I will be using Epson Scan 2, which is the updated version of the original Epson Scan. Epson Scan is pretty dope, but Epson Scan 2 is a lot faster and more efficient, especially for a guy like me. So let's get into the settings. Scanner is gonna be the Epson V600. I'm not selecting the scan settings because, nah, we're gonna go with photo mode. I mean, mode is gonna be photo mode. The document source, this is super important that it needs to be on transparency unit. Also, so very, very, very important is that you're gonna make your document type color positive film. Um, these settings are based off of what you're trying to do in the moment, but what I'm going for is a high res scan. So we're going for image type, 48 bit color, resolution, 2400 DPI, scanning quality high, and we're gonna be scanning as TIFFs. So I've already set up a folder, and we're gonna go ahead and look at our um, selections here. So what you do is with this crosshair tool, there obviously is an option for you to select thumbnails, but I'm not gonna select thumbnails because I do not want the software to make selections for me. Um, you run into mistakes that way. So what I do is I just make a rough selection around the actual images. Um, it's okay if you get some of the um, film holder. Um, it's also okay if you get some of the border or some of the other image because in Lightroom you have the flexibility to go ahead and um, you have the ability to go ahead and just adjust it with the software we or the plugin we'll be using next. So boom, here we are. Locking this all in. And now that it's all selected, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and scan it. Now because we're scanning high-res photos, it's going to take a much longer time than if you were just scanning JPEGs or something smaller. Um, I'm not going to dumb down this um, scan for the sake of this video because I'm actually planning on using these images. So what I'll do is I'll fast forward it. And as we are wrapping up, I just wanted to point out that this scanner and software combo is pretty solid. Um, initially, it did say that it would take about five minutes to scan all five photos but the truth of the matter is the lie detector results have come in and they determined that was a lie it was more like seven minutes for the 10 photos which still is not bad so i will not complain but back to the task at hand so what we're going to do is we're going to grab our folder and we're going to drag our folder over to our lightroom classic lightroom classic is going to open up going to show us what we're, what we're bringing in which is our scans we're going to hit import now that the photos are imported we're going to go ahead and we're going to select the ones that we want to scan um these are our photos of um the first time i took portraits of my dad um on film and also some photos from my cousin's um baby shower um well, for the sake of this video we're going to focus on the ones that are the most important and um, that for me is gonna be the ones of my dad. So boom, here we are, image of my dad. And as you can see, this is a negative that we scanned as a color positive. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our eyedropper from the develop area and Lightroom Classic. We're gonna select the border, right? We're gonna then take the crop tool, which is on the top, and we're gonna crop the border out of this photo because the plugin that I was mentioning earlier is Negative Lab Pro 
and negative lab pro um, works best when there's very little to no border in the image so here we are the full negative I'm gonna go ahead and open up negative lab pro with the shortcut the shortcut is control N now the source is a TIFF scan the color mode is gonna be black and white because I feel like that just works best um, pre saturation we're gonna keep it at default border buffer is 5% now we're going to hit the magic button that says convert negatives. Boom. It's going to convert negatives. Then after it finishes converting, it's going to take us to another screen where we can see our negative. I mean, well, our positive now, right? Our, our photo. And we have some options. So what we're going to do here now is mess with the options and see what they do. So if we take brightness and put it all the way up, it looks like that. Which isn't bad considering it's a ISO 400 film. But that's not what we're going for. We're going for the vibes, right? This was shot with um, lighting and I metered it properly. So, you know, I should be able to get what I was looking for. So I'm going to bump up the brightness just a bit, bump up the contrast a, a little bit more because who doesn't love a good contrasty black and white image? The darks, we're going to darken. The lights, we're going to lighten just a little. Um, the blacks, we're going to... Oh, sorry, I'm getting a call. I'm going to decline that. <laughs> the blacks, we're going to boost up a little more. Boom. So they're not as black, right? They could be blackety black, but they're not going to be blackety black. They're just going to be a little black. And now that I'm looking at it, the darks are a little too dark, too. So I'm going to bring those up. Um, super important thing to consider. Make a copy. Make it a TIFF stack it with the photo All right let me explain the reason why you want to do this is because Lightroom will not allow you to use the tools on the side of your Lightroom uh, sorry your Lightroom tools let me just say that won't allow you to use your Lightroom tools unless it is a fully baked photo considering that this is a plugin if you do not save it as an additional copy or as an additional image it will not allow you to use these plugins or these actual controls when you use them they will be reversed and they will do very weird things back to our originally scheduled program we hit apply it takes its time there we are okay so now that we're here what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our finder why did it do that that's very strange we're going to go back to our finder we're gonna drop our positive boom then we can go ahead and drop that positive into our Lightroom it does seem like a lot of steps but um I honestly feel like this is the best way to go so now in here we have a lot more flexibility so, because if we go up with our exposure it works properly versus in the other image if we went up it went down so now we get to use the fine-tuned tools of Lightroom to fine tune our image. Bring down the shadow. Oh, bring up the shadows. Bring down the shadows. Yep, bring down the whites a little bit. It's extra bright. Um, if you wanna increase the grain, you can go ahead and mess with the texture and the grain will pop up substantially more. We're not necessarily going for that, so we're gonna keep it there. Bring down our lights a little bit, bump up our darks bring down our shadows and that's what we have it's a portrait of my dad and that is the end of this video we have successfully gone from a roll of film to a roll of film in a spool in a Patterson tank to a developed roll of film to a developed roll of film that's properly archived then scanned and then converted and the last step is to export this film we're gonna export this film and this image is going to be called dad it's going to be put in the dad folder boom choose and i typically only use um lightroom to proof images for clients so i have to change some of my settings here i'm going to make sure my resolution is 300 dpi i'm going to take off my watermark and i make sure the quality is 100 percent it is a jpeg and we're going to export and that is the end of this video i thank you all for tuning in and watching it with me or watching me talk 
I'll do voiceover the whole damn time. Um, this is still something that's really new to me. And there were a lot of bumps in the process of making this video, but I will not complain and I will not spill the beans. Just know that your boy really put in work for you. You heard? Take a look at this picture of my dad. I look nothing like him, but it's a good photo. Thank you guys for tuning in. Please keep your notifications on and comment and like this shit because there's another video coming soon and if you didn't already subscribe make sure that you subscribe because my little brother said you should subscribe you heard thank you for tuning in have a good night and make sure that you shoot some photos